okay to do a review of what we have done so far uh, in the framework of mechatronics devices and you will see that we started with the framework we started with the discussion on this framework of mechatronic devices in our initial lectures uh, we had the device uh, mechanism which was in the analog domain and we had the control and other aspects which was done by the digital computer and this was in the digital domain and we uh, had to interface the digital device uh, the the mechanical device or whatever that you can say physical device rather than a mechanical device uh, we had to interface it with this digital uh, computer and for that uh, we made some basic preparations uh, we went through the aspects that were involved so we had uh, systematically explored the digital world we reviewed whatever we had done uh, boolean logic uh, the binary representation operations using binary representations and uh, logic simplification of logic etc we did that as a part of the digital computer of course we have other aspects like control which we have not yet done so far but you will understand as we proceed with our course that we are going to do that now the purpose of this review is that if you have any discuss any query or any point which you would like to have clarified uh, you can ask me uh, during this review so please do not hesitate uh, but uh, we'll be able to take only one question at a time and uh, while you ask the question and while i answer it you will have to keep your camera on okay so this is a important requirement uh, let's proceed uh, we have uh, done this a significant portion of the digital world we have reviewed it we have also seen the digital to analog converter and uh, digital outputs we are yet to do the drive amplifier part and the actuators part so we have to uh, do this part and we'll do it subsequently in our coming lectures so we have started with the bridge from the digital domain to the analog domain and also we did the operational amplifier we did a signal conditioning some portion of signal conditioning like amplification and offsetting and some other configurations using the operational amplifier and we saw how the operational amplifier can be used for realizing digital to analog conversion as well as for analog to digital conversion and you can pass on this analog signal to the digital world through either analog to digital conversion or digital inputs depending upon the form in which the inputs are provided so now uh, let us try to focus on the response of the device you see after all we are trying to control this device it may be in any energy domain it may be in the mechanical domain electrical domain or electromechanical domain it could be in the fluid domain it could be in the thermal domain so you have a vast spectrum of applications this device has to be controlled now if you are to control this device you should understand how would it behave if you would subject it to certain inputs how would the outputs be so how is this device going to respond by producing an output what kind of output will be produced or certain inputs this is what we will seek to explore in this now this device if we are to actually understand its behavior uh, 
we will have to prepare what we call as a model um, in the um, a few years back maybe a few decades back a model used to be prepared um, in hardware uh, you could actually prepare a scaled down model maybe of an automobile of a, of a aeroplane or a submarine or a ship and then you could subject it to testing and then you would come to know how is it going to behave but today with the advent of computers things have become uh, easier and we'll see during our discussion why uh, they are easier and what are the aspects which are advantages so today um, we need a model but it's not in the form as a scaled model physical model uh, it's in the form of uh, an abstract model which we call as a mathematical model this mathematical model is something which the computer can understand okay and this model is used also for the control so it's used for controlling of the system and also for uh, a number of other uh, issues connected with the control of this device so modeling this device studying its behavior start designing its control uh, this is very important and it's possible if you have a model of this device so we will set about in our lecture to proceed with the model of this but before we that do that we will just quickly review this uh, whatever slides we have done so far and we we'll just summarize things so we saw uh, in our analog domain uh, we had to make use of this device called the operational amplifier we reviewed the principles of the operational amplifier and it was simple we could see that we had just two principles for a operational amplifier it was a very versatile device and you you could realize using this operational amplifier a number of configurations you could use it as a comparator as it is shown here you could use it as a inverting and amplifying device as shown here in this configuration and for all these configurations you see here we could use it as a summing configuration you could sum up signals sum up sum up weighted signals uh, here we could integrate signals here we could differentiate signals obtain derivatives of signals and all this in analog using the operational amplifier we could also use it in the non inverting configuration and also as a buffering configuration so we have seen all these different configurations and in case of all these we have derived the essential the outputs in terms of the inputs starting from the first principles of the operational amplifier then we try to uh, understand the linkage between the digital to the analog domain so in the analog domain you had signals with respect to time but in the digital domain you have digits so how do you make this conversion uh, so first we set about understanding how to employ the operational amplifier to realize a digital to analog conversion we started with a single bit and then we went on adding bits to the digital side so we took an example of a 4 bit digital to analog converter and we saw that we could uh, realize 16 different levels of voltages from the minimum to the maximum okay and depending upon the bit combination starting from 0000 to 1111 we could obtain voltages as output here 
in steps so we were able to go from digital to the analog domain uh, we also derived the expressions for this configuration and we also um, saw how by adding more and more bits we could get finer and finer voltages steps output so then we then uh, numerical examples um, i am sure you have understood this we also um, did an example on an on an offsetting circuit offsetting an amplifi amplification circuit uh, where we had to scale up a signal so we had to prepare an offset circuit and uh, we had to take the output from a dac which was actually in a unipolar range 0 to 5 volts to a bipolar range of plus minus 10 volts and we saw how this could be done and how it could be realized in the form of a analog circuit then we set about doing the reverse task that is analog to digital conversion and in analog to digital conversion we started with the ramp method of analog to digital conversion so here we made use of the digital to analog converter we made use of the operational amplifier as a comparator and using an algorithm we could uh, go step by step and determine what would be the digital value for an, a particular analog signal then we also uh, understood we tried to understand the method of successive approximation and i had explained to you in terms of uh, a mechanical analogy using the weighing scales and how a signal is digitized um, in in this manner so the advantage of the successive approximation method uh, was also discussed we could see that the number of steps involved are uh, is uh, equal to the number of bits um, in which you want to do the representation digital representation of your analog signal so we went about and then we studied a very fast method recently we studied the flash method of analog to digital conversion and in this the conversion was instantaneous but it involved a lot of hardware and also you had to <coughs> uh, do a lot of simplification but of course once that is done you could get your signal out uh, instantaneously we did it in order to understand we did it for a 2 bit example we could have done it for a 3 bit as well but in that case we would have had to have more number of resistances more number of comparators latches and a more um, complex code converter circuit which is of course a combination logic circuit but we would have had to do a lot of simplification and then we could go on increasing this um, we could do it for 8 bits conversion for 12 bit conversion 16 bit conversion and so on. but all this can be realized in hardware like once you make it in hardware on a chip uh, you can realize this but of course if you are going to use a flash method although you get the signal uh, you get the values digital values instantaneously the device is going to be very expensive because of the hardware involved and we also saw that in order to reduce the cost we could have several channels multiplexing uh, with the flash adc so that you could select the channels and acquire the signal and determine the digital representation of that signal we also did um, a problem an example uh, on how the signal could be digitized so i think now you have a clearer idea uh, where we are in this framework of mechatronics devices so we have done quite a bit we have done the analog to digital part digital to analog part 
we have done a bit of signal conditioning we have done a bit of this digital computers and now we need to understand the device and how it functions and together with this the model of the device and how it functions we can also integrate actuators and sensors in fact we can model them as well and also the drive amplifiers so as we do the actuators we'll also do the drive amplifiers and also some sensors quite a bit of this you will be reading on your own um, because everything i would not like to spoon feed you i am sure that you will enjoy uh, reading and determining on your own uh, this a significant part of your work uh, which is uh, going to be based on the microcontroller uh, will be done in a project mode by you all individually uh, i'll be posting the assignment possibly today uh you will have to get a microcontroller arduino uh, device arduino uno and it's very low cost you can order it online maybe between 400 to 800 rupees uh, it's very very cheap and you can um, begin with programming you can begin with uh, interfacing it with your computer okay so that's the advantage that you have and uh, when you see the site of arduino you will see there there are um, a number of examples fantastic examples so now we will try to focus on this aspect on the device aspect now this device actually it doesn't understand digits it doesn't understand uh, the digital world it's a physical system okay it works on the laws of physics and we would like to uh, understand how this device is going to behave so we will set about in our next few lectures uh, we will set about trying to understand the behavior or the dynamics of these physical systems physical devices physical systems and uh, that's what we will do in this lecture so coming to uh, i i hope you don't have any questions in what we have done so far if you have any you can ask me i am going to proceed to the next topic otherwise